will go to the face-off X. Should be a fun matchup throughout today. Justin Inacio, two-time Big Ten Special of the Week already this season. And Brian Herbert for Hofstra on the right, number one. So two guys who are over 50% on the season. And it's Ohio State winning the first face-off of the day with Ryan Tarafinko, the ball in his stick. Quick ball movement and a save blocked in front before it got to the cage. Ground ball comes all the way out to the near side and scooped up off the turf by Jackson Reed. And early you see Ohio State right off the face-off, able to get some early offense in transition. They do like to push the ball. They will play fast. And if they can create transition, they will. So Hofstra's got to be prepared for numbers coming in their face. This is Colby Smith going against the short stick defensive midfielder Mark Ellis. And we talked about the youth and all the new faces and new positions on the Hofstra side of things, Steve. If there's one thing that they do have some stability, minus goaltending from a year ago, it is in that close defense. Here's a look right in front on the crease, and it's put home by Trey LeClaire. Ohio State on top, 1-0, 52 seconds in. And LeClaire just comes wide open in the middle Ohio of that Hofstra Ohio. defense. Not sure what happened if, if they were sliding and they got caught in a rotation, but you see Colby Smith here, attacks right hand and slide comes, and there's no second slide. So off ball, defensively, that, that top tier midi, he's got to be sunk all the way down in the hole, and he's got to be helping to LeClaire and be in a position to be that two slide. He wasn't. LeClaire did a nice job of cutting to the ball and was able to finish one-on-one. -on -one. LeClaire, the leading finisher for Ohio State this season, 17 goals, State. trailed only or closely by Jack Jasinski, a senior for Ohio State. An infraction on the faceoff by Anasio, and the Pride will get their first offensive possession of the game. This an area that's been in flux for Hofstra through the early part of the season with some injuries. Dylan McIntosh actually broke his jaw a couple of games ago against Villanova. He's been out for a while. James Philbin shuttling down from the midfield to be at the X and attack today. And again, out of these top six guys for Hofstra, right now only two of them uh, saw a decent amount of playing time a year ago in Tierney and, and Giannis. There's Philbin ranging to his right. Nice job defensively by Tarafenko. This is Tierney Hofstra's leading point man. 14 goals, two assists on the season. Tierney drawing the pole at the top of the box. 18 on the shot clock. Tierney left-handed shot firing, missing it wide of the cage as Kearson had a good look at it. Using Tierney up above the goal. Guy that played midfield and attack in high school, so he's comfortable up top. Six on the shot clock turnover. Here come the Buckeyes. With some pace and speed, it's Borges, the Long Island native. Borges trying to center, center it, and the ball gets away, scooped up by Eric Wentz. Wentz pushing up ahead. Here's Griff Barnathan, short stick defensive midfielder, and he will feed it off and then wait for the offensive personnel to come on. Ohio State had a great opportunity. The number 50, Evan Riss, he cut. Instead of just staying high, he would have been a nice outlet, and they would have had a five on four, but because he cut, he actually covered himself made it very easy for the Hofstra defense, and that's what led to that turnover to come back and give Hofstra the ball again. You know, one of the things that Nick Myers talked about, they, they really felt they cleaned up last week against Marquette was their ability to ride, create turnovers in transition, this time giving it up. Here's Stephen Ardry draws a double team, slips to the turf and loses the ball, but a foul against Ohio State will give it back to the pride. Here's Witt Stopak with the ball in his stick, a freshman, Actually, one of the few Ohio natives on the Hofstra roster. Giannis coming goal line extended. Giannis towing the crease, looking right on the crease. A low pass for Stopak. He can't handle it. Ball to the turf. And Ohio State comes away with it. Ground ball in traffic for Joey Salisbury. Ohio State ground ball. Third ground ball of the season for Salisbury. And this is Tarafenko. Bringing the ball up the field. We saw it all over social media. Tarafenko had the goal last week against Marquette. The hidden ball trick for his third goal of the season. 
So in self situation so far, Ohio State one for one. They scored the goal 58 seconds in from Trey LeClaire. Four minutes gone by and one nothing Ohio State lead. Ohio State likes to play that two-man game off of the wings. So you got to talk and communicate through picks if you're Hofstra defensively. Got to make sure you know your assignment when you're in that in that two-man game against them. Buckley's pass knocked away, recovered though by Trey LeClaire all the way up near midfield. This is Colby Smith, a sophomore out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Up top for LeClaire, rifles one past Casey. Second goal of the game for Trey LeClaire and second goal of the game for Ohio State. And I was just talking about that two-man game. They usually like to do it off of the wing, um, but they did it at, up at, uh, at the top, dead center. A little bit of a pick. And again, Hofstra, you've got to communicate on those situations. And you've got to know who the shooter is off of the pick. And you know, a guy like LeClaire, you've got to show him some respect. So again, you're going to see here a little bit of a two-man game. Two guys going to the ball, and you can't leave LeClaire like that. So poor job defensively from Hofstra, but a nice outside rip from LeClaire. That's one of the things that Seth Tierney was talking about this season as a win for Inacio. Is from a game-to-game -game basis, they're not always sure what type of team is going to, to show up, right? Like, they lost to Villanova, but he said on the... On the bus ride back, we actually felt pretty good about that performance. Felt like things were starting to click. Come back and uh, have a game against a local rival in Stony Brook and then um, lose that game by a goal. And then uh, the game last week against Georgetown, which they felt like was their worst performance of the season. This is Wiseman. Behind the cage, freshman Jack Myers. Ball gets through all the way up top. A bouncer. And it looked like Casey was cheating a little bit to his left. And the ball went over his right shoulder. And Ohio State is up 3-0 on the goal from Johnny Weissman. And this ball takes Ohio State a real funny hop. Score by number 22, Johnny totally had the goalie of Hofstra, Casey, fooled. And it's just a tough play. You know, you, you get that, that ball down, it kind of... Skirts through right to Weissman. And again, if you take a look at this shot, it takes a really funny hop. And was a very difficult save. So again, right here, it skips through. Nobody's at ready. And it takes a real funny bounce on him. And that's a tough save for anybody. But give credit to Ohio State. They have been pretty good here early on, taking that 3 nothing lead. Face-off win for Hofstra. Numbers quickly. They try to get the shot off. It's blocked by Henrik. And Ohio State's going the other Ohio way. Henrik bringing the ball over the midfield line. Knocked away. Picked up by Philbin. He moves it up towards Wentz. And right there's a defenseman. You've got to have the butt end of your stick covered up when you're in traffic because that's just an easy check. Wentz trying to set a screen for Tierney. He does. Let's a shot fly and it's saved by Kearson. Hugging the near side post. Tierney has had multi-point games in each of Hofstra's five regular season games so far. The only player on the pride to do that. Freshman Matt Elder bring the ball up right now. Well, he's their most dynamic player. He, he can dodge, he can shoot from the outside. He's a very good feeder. I mean, he's the guy. If you're an opposing defense, you feel like if you can slow him down, you can stop as a Hofstra attack. Tierney lets a shot fly. Kearson had a good beat on it. And Ohio State pushing the other way very quickly. Flag down, delayed penalty coming up on Hofstra. Ohio State already with a 3-0 lead. Offenses look good. Trey LeClaire with a pair so far for the Buckeyes. Lucas Buckley taking his time, dragging things all the way out near the midfield. Buckley right in on the crease. Casey gets a stop on an in tight save from a shot from Jack Jasinski. And we'll have our first penalty and man up chance of the game. Another great look 
for Ohio State's offense. Hofstra going off sides there, the leading to the penalty. But so far, every time Hofstra slid, there's been no two slide. There's been no off ball help. The guy on the crease has been wide open every time they've had to slide to the to the guy with the ball. So they've, they've got to do a better job off ball. They've got to be packed in, and they've got to be helping out on that crease man. So 30-second man up chance for Ohio State. And the extra pass has really been what's got them involved in another crease look. That one thrown a little bit behind Colby Smith. Let's see if he was there, if he caught it. 10 seconds remain on the man advantage. Ball moving quickly for Ohio State. Good coverage on the crease for Hofstra. Nowhere to go. The ball's dislodged, but a penalty flag comes out after that. And with two seconds remaining on this penalty, Hofstra will go right back to the box. That's going to be a holding penalty on the pride. And Colby Smith right here, he's got to be in position. He's got to be ready to let that go right away. Good job, though, by Hofstra's defense. We talked about them not collapsing on the inside, letting guys be free in the middle. Did a much better job there with their man down team. But now they only got four. Four guys, oh, yeah, four guys out there. going to be very difficult right now. But here's the penalty release, so they'll, they'll get back to six on five now. With that penalty expired, 20 seconds remaining on the second one. We're midway through the first quarter with Ohio State leading 3-0 here on the road. Pass knocked away, out of bounds. It'll stay with Ohio State, 12 on the penalty clock. Ball comes up top for Smith. They're looking again towards the crease as much as they can. Myers, GLE left side, shot sailing over the crossbow. And it will stay with Ohio State. Penalties released as we are back to six on six. Hofstra coming into this game, very good opponent man up percentage, just 21% coming into the game. They've only now allowed four goals on about 16 chances. Myers right into the numbers of Casey, and the first save of the game for the Hofstra Pride as they looked outlet out. And Ohio State felt really comfortable with their ride last week against Marquette. Trying to do the same here. And looking good so far as Hofstra tries to get it over the line. They just beat out the clock. Right on the crease, a shot just wide off the stick of Dominic Pryor. He was kind of camping out on the crease and had a decent look at it. Good early offense from Hofstra there. I think six on six. You know, with, with Tierney really being the only true guy that can really dodge and create, I think they've got to find other ways to score goals. And early offense and transition is one of those ways that they can create some opportunities. That was a good look right there. You know, if I'm that Hofstra staff, I'm looking for other ways to, again, create some easy opportunities and some easy looks for us uh, in the transition game. Well, that does feel a little double-edged with how much time they've spent on the defensive third of the field as well. Well, absolutely. Yeah, you want to take good. You want to take good looks. You don't want to force things. But again, if, if you can create some opportunities and some good ones, uh, you know, you'll take that risk. Ryan Kennard, a junior out of Media PA, has it right now for Hofstra. Four goals on the season for the junior. Up top, this is James Philbin. Now Tierney, drawing a double team. Tierney over to Philbin. Slide comes quickly on the short stick. His. Pass is dislodged and picked up by Ohio State. Racing up the field, it's McConney. Oh, short stick D mid. Good transition for Ohio State as they get the ball back into their offensive area. Five plus to play, three nothing. Buckeyes in the first quarter. Back at X with four and a half to go. This is Jack Myers, who's had a great start to his freshman campaign. 18 points through four games. And an even nine goals, nine assists for the freshman out of Bethesda, Maryland. LeClaire. Shot, Casey got it. Rebound, put back in 
by Ohio State. Looked like Jackson Reed was there for the juicy rebound. And the Buckeyes take a 4-0 lead. Timeout, Hofstra. Hofstra call After Reed scored his 11th goal of the season. Ohio State goal, his 11th of the season. That's the type of goal that can crush you as a defense. You get a good stop here, the goalie makes the save, and then it just rebounds. Right spot, right time, and Ohio State's able to capitalize and again take this 4 0 lead here with 421 left in the first. This Ohio State offense has been amongst the tops in the country, scoring a little over 13 goals per game, and their top five are incredibly dangerous. Well, see a double header coming up for you. Stay tuned on Lack Sports Network. On Sunday, that's tomorrow, we got Villanova and Drexel in a battle for Philly supremacy. And then St. Joe's versus Penn at 2.30. So you get a whole bunch of lax action from the city of brotherly love tomorrow starting at noon. And Villanova off to a good start. Penn knocked off Villanova yesterday. Drexel in a pretty good CAA so far. Of course, the number one team in the country coming out of the CAA this week in Towson. One of three unbeaten teams left in the country along with Ohio State and Penn. And I like that Towson team. I, I had an opportunity to see them uh, and call their game right here in this network uh, against Hopkins and they just totally dismantled those guys and then, you know, they take care of business against Loyola. So Coach Nadlin's done a great job with that Tiger program, another CAA team, you know, as we call Hofstra here today. but. So far, got to give the Tigers credit. They've looked great, and they are definitely the best team in the country right now. Ohio State coming into this game ranked ninth in the country, hoping to perhaps climb up those rankings. And so far, offensively looking like they deserve it today. A 4 nothing start on the road in Hempstead. Back to the face-off X. Here is Justin Inacio and Brian Herbert, those two have been even so far today. And a procedure there against Inacio, so it'll be Hofstra's ball. Now one number I was looking at stats-wise coming into this game, Steve, is that Hofstra and Ohio State really actually have a pretty similar number of shots total coming into this game, but the shots on goal for Ohio State had a much better shot percentage and that's kind of playing itself out today as well you're 100 percent right I, I think you know obviously we've talked a little bit about how Hofstra has struggled here offensively especially on the six on six here's Giannis on a roll down shot low save by Kirsten going down and making the five hole stop and and there's usually a, a couple of reasons why you struggle either offensively or defensively and like you said for Hofstra when they do get looks they just have not shot the ball well at all this year so they've definitely got to clean that up Here's Jasinski, high shot, saved by Casey. Quick outlet pass ahead as he looks for Santos. Hofstra trying to move the numbers quickly. Tierney gets a screen from Santos up top. And the six defenders back for Ohio State will settle back into their defensive roles. 3.13 to go in the first quarter. Ohio State leading 4-0 on the road into Hempstead. Giannis had just perhaps the best look of the game for Hofstra. And a stout save made by Kirsten moments ago. And, and that's a guy that Hofstra can look to uh, to try to take some pressure off of Tierney. He's a guy that's been around for a while. He's pretty quick. He's pretty elusive. That's a guy that can take the ball and stick and make a play. Kennard diving in across the crease and scores. Got by his defender and gets Hofstra on the board. It's 4-1 to one with 2.38 to play in the first. Hofstra goal, his fifth of the season. And here's maybe another guy that Hofstra can go to. Looks like he's getting a short stick That's matchup Ryan today Kennard, out of the midfield. Of the Does a nice job. Look at that re-dodge there. Pulled him the defender out, re-dodged him right away, able to get underneath, and a really good finish with his left hand. So give, give Kennard a lot of credit there. Made a nice move. And again, able to finish in tight lefty as he goes diving across the crease and get Hofstra back within three. So Hofstra on the board. 
And exactly what you want out of your face-off guy after you give up a goal. Inacio coming back the other side. Shot pulled wide. And Jack Myers backing up for the Buckeyes. It was Jackson Reed who missed the cage on the last shot. And when we talk about Hofstra's youth, Ohio State's got some young guys who are really performing quite well early on. Talked about Myers. Jackson Reed is only a sophomore. Inacio, their Fogo, is a sophomore. And he's possibly morphing into one of the best guys in the Big Ten, if not the country. Ball's dropped to the turf, it goes. And a scrum for it. We'll have a whistle and Ohio State called for a hold. We'll try to play that loose ball, so Hofstra will have it. Two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Ohio State, strong start. Jumped out three goals early on, added a fourth to that. Hofstra scored moments ago to make it a 4-1 four, a four game. Brian shuttling in some offensive personnel. Philbin coming along with Sterling Ardry and Matt Elder. They rotate about four guys through their first midfield group. This is Ardry on the run, high shot, bouncing off the turf, and that goes in. So the Pride have scored back-to-back -back goals here in the last couple of minutes to make it a 4-2 contest. Just a simple play here. Sweeps across the top. Gets to his right hand. And again, makes a nice, nice bounce shot here on the run. Gets his hands back. Good job by Ardry. And again, finishes it off with that nice bounce shot. So if you're Ohio State, I'm not sure if they were playing hands there. It almost looked like they were kind of forcing them to the middle. But anytime you force someone to the middle of the field, there's that threat of him having a really good look at the net, seeing the full six by six, and getting a look like that. Ardry, one of the two freshmen in that first midfield group for Hofstra, along with Matt Elder, getting his second goal of the season. Inacio and Herbert locked in a battle at midfield over the Hofstra H. Uh, looks like Herbert's got the clamp on it. Inacio trying to fight for him, and the crowd getting into it as well. Just a battle of strength, and Ohio State's got it. Inacio with a strong win. And the Buckeyes will try and settle themselves after that faceoff win. Less than a minute to play here in the opening quarter. And Ohio State leading 4-2. to two. I think if you're Ohio State here, obviously Hofstra ripped off two in a row here. Starting to tape back some momentum. Want to be smart with the ball. Maybe start to initiate your offense with about 25 or 20 seconds left. I don't think you want to give Hofstra any opportunity here uh, to carry even more momentum into the second quarter. Look for them to play for the last shot. Weissman looks up towards the clock with 20 seconds, beats his man. Quick shot, and it bounced off the post, it looked like. Big carom out of bounds. Ohio State closes to it with 12.8 on the shot on the game clock. 10 seconds to go, they'll back it up to X. Moving up top, Leclerc lets it go right as time is about to expire. And 1.4 seconds remain on the game clock. So Myers will bring it in, trying to heave something in front of the crease. He does, no shot comes off before the quarter expires. And four to two is our score after one quarter of play. They started out this game with a 4-0 lead. Hofstra grabbed a couple towards the end of that first quarter. And it seemed like offensively they settled down a little bit after that. Give credit to Hofstra. Good response. You go down 4-0. Take Ohio State. Had them a little bit on the ropes. Had a couple opportunities that they blew offensively where they had some good looks. But give Hofstra credit. Fought back. Winning that big faceoff right here to start the second quarter. And they're right back in this game. Well, these last two face-offs between Inacio and Herbert, they've been fun. We'll see if they, they keep it like that for the rest of this afternoon. But dead even, four of eight for both sides from the face-off X, including that face-off. Hofstra wearing the red, white, and blue uniforms today for Military Appreciation Day. And Ohio State in the road reds with the gray helmets and shorts. 
as well as the numerals. Here's with Stopak at X. Second leading scorer for Hofstra in terms of goals this season with six on 18 shots. Here's Ryan Kennard scored one of those goals, lets a shot fly wide, and Hofstra backing up. And you can see Kennard now getting that long pole up top. Took advantage of the short stick before, so if you can get him in a pick game, get him matched up with a short stick, he's a guy that can create for you offensively. Philbin carrying the ball at X. Uh, Tierney has really been limited. He's got a couple of shots off so far today. A, shot, a pass goes high. Tierney's able to recover near midfield, though. 14 on the shot clock for Hofstra. Tierney ranging to his left. Pass high. Recovered, though, by the Pride. Six seconds left. Here's Kennard, a shot hitting the side of the post. And that will be enough to give him another 30 on the shot clock. So Hofstra has time and the ability to reset offensively. You know, Steve, you've done a few games this year. What do you think of the shot clock so far? I love it. I was always a proponent of it. Uh, always thought that it needed to be implemented. Uh, I think it's great for the game. Um, and um, it just makes it so much easier for the officials. It takes out that kind of silly end of the game. How quick do you put it on? Um, and kind of penalize a team maybe that, that's winning the game. So it's easy. It's standard now. Everybody knows the rules. Uh, it makes, speeds up the pace of game, and it's going to create more opportunities, more scoring. So I think that's great for the game. Tierney trying to thread the needle on a pass, was able to do so, but sort of blindsided his teammate, James Philbin, went off the shoulder pad and then the helmet and out of bounds. So Ohio State gets it back on the Hofstra turnover. Ride coming for the pride, but Jasinski able to roll dodge out of it right to the crease for LeClaire. He loses it, ball knocked up into the air, picked up by Wentz, and then he's able to get it to Bobby Casey for Hofstra to clear. So both teams have done a really good job redefending all the way through from one side of the field to the other. Here's Ellis trying to shoot it. He does so wide. Backing up for Hofstra was with Stopak. Sort of a dangerous shot with very few guys back at X from the Hofstra side of things. Mark Ellis in his second year after transferring from Stony Brook as a grad student. Two Hofstra captains along with Ryan Tierney this year. Matt Elder straight away. See Hofstra taking the short stick behind. See how Ohio State reacts to if they're quick to go or if they zone up top. Looks like they're going to be quick with their slide. Elder to the crease, a shot and a score for Riley Forte. His third goal of the season, and Hofstra has scored three straight to cut it to a one-goal deficit. And I like what Hofstra did here offensively. Went to that short stick behind, that invert set, switching things up here offensively. So far in this second quarter, they've done a couple different things, but here, right here, they go to the invert. That quick slide is coming, and Forte just cuts down right through the heart of the defense, realizing that they're in a slide in rotation. Um, they're in their, in their slide in rotation, and he's able to get free on the inside and able to finish that right hand. That's a nice play from Forte. Good job of reading the defense off ball and getting himself open. Forte playing in all six games this season now. It's got to be feel good for him after missing the last two years with injury. Here's Herber on the faceoff win, trying to streak towards the crease. Denied entry, though. And Hofstra will try and resettle. Knocked out of bounds, and the officials are going to confer. It looks like it'll stay with Hofstra. Herbert thought about trying to keep that in as he was skittering off the field, but then thought better of it. I thought that was off Hofstra. But sometimes when the defensive team forces the ball loose, then they end up calling it that way. But kind of with you. Dodge from up top. Wormberger going wide of the cage. Um, Ardry, who already has a goal today. Hofstra going right back to that invert set. Playing a big, big little two-man game behind, using the pick here. Giannis 
That is pocket picked. Ohio State ground ball number 50, Evan Riss. Evan Riss picking up the ground ball. Long pull, midi for Ohio, Ohio State. State. We've played almost five minutes in the second quarter, and Hofstra has pretty much had all of the possession. So the Buckeyes will go back to work for the first time in what feels like a long time. Lucas Buckley with the ball in the stick gives a look back to the clock behind him in the south end zone here at Sheward Stadium. Buckeyes jumped out early, scored four straight to begin the game. Scored the first goal just 52 seconds into the contest. But Hofstra has been able to work some offensive flow into this one. Back check picked up by Barnathan on the loose ball. Flag coming down on a tripping call as Barnathan was able to keep the ball in the stick. Here they come with the long pole and Santos who lost the ball. Ball to the turf. Hofstra maintaining the possession for a moment and now it's going to go out of bounds and Hofstra will go on the man advantage for the first time today. Big opportunity here for Hofstra. They've totally taken momentum back. Got a man up opportunity with a chance to tie the game here. So big spot right here for both teams. Ohio State 0 for 2 on the man up today. And we'll take another look at the, at the penalty here. As first ball knocked loose, Barnathan was in you know, the right spot. And you're going to see the trip right there. I think their feet got hung up. He didn't trip him with a stick, but either way, it's a trip. And Hofstra will go on the man up. Lucas Buckley in the box for 30 seconds. Tierney to the left side. Now they try to move the ball with some haste here. As Stopak's got it. Back up top, they work it around the horn. Tierney reverses it to the right side. Good stout defense for Ohio State. Force an outside shot by Tierney, and Kirsten saw it the whole way. I think he'd like to work for a little bit of a better shot there. Had some time left on the penalty. That was a shot from distance. Ohio State with some trouble clearing the ball right now. But they do get it over. Hofstra just 6 of 17 on the man up so far this season after that one. And I think Ohio State needs a possession here because they've been playing a lot of defense. Obviously just coming off of the man down situation. So need a bit of a rest on the other side of the ball. Need to get back at some kind of a rhythm offensively because since the end of that first quarter, they have not really done much here offensively. Now for the first almost five minutes, Hofstra had the ball, and then Ohio State came down, turnover right away, and then the penalty that led to the man up chance. As Ohio State, Bugliosi looking right to the crease, ball knocked away by Wentz, picked up by the pride. A little trouble holding on to the ball, redefend for Ohio State, we'll have a whistle. Bugliosi was looking at a wide open one-on-one -on -one situation with Casey, but for good reason, Ohio State was guilty of a foul. Give credit to Hofstra defensively. They've made some adjustments. They're doing a much better job of covering guys up on the inside. Ohio State still dodging, drawing that slide, and then throwing that first pass right in the middle. Really in the game, but Hofstra now off ball has done a much better job. Their guys are, are slumped down, all helping out, sticks to the inside, and have taken that play away. So Ohio State's gonna have to look to Maybe not throw that pass in the middle right away, but move it around the outside and look for another dodger on the backside. But give credit to Hofstra. They did, made, made the adjustments, and they've been much better defensively. Archery forced outside as a double team comes his way. We're midway through the second quarter. 4-3 Ohio State on top. On the road here. Jonas, double team came over to him. Balls dislodged from his stick to the top of the box. Tierney had it for a moment. He's in a crowd of red jerseys. Comes away free. He lets a shot go. Saved by Kirsten. Out of bounds to the near side. Looked like Kirsten kicked it away. And Ohio State looks like they're going to take a timeout after that sequence almost ended in a Hofstra goal. Yeah, I think they need a timeout. I think they need to regroup resettle here, definitely need to get a stop here, because again, Hofstra has taken back this momentum, taken back control of this game, and offensively has looked way, way better in this second quarter. 
and they're starting to have their way a little bit with Ohio State defensively. So good timeout from Coach Myers. Get his troops in a huddle, get them settled down, get them refocused, and playing Ohio State lacrosse again. You know, we talked about the, the youth that Hofstra has on their side, losing 18 seniors uh, from last year's team. For a team like that, uh, two young guys in the top four of the midfield, two freshmen in that, another freshman on the, uh, on the attack, you get a couple goals here and you can see the confidence start to grow and that's vitally important for a young team. And you're right, you know, you get a couple goals and you start to get some success. Now these young guys start to believe. Obviously they're, they're gifted, they're talented enough uh, to do what they need to do and what's necessary to be successful uh, on the offensive side of the ball. But like you said, sometimes it's just that confidence and that belief in what they're doing. And when you get a couple of, couple of goals, you start to build that confidence all of a sudden they look like a different team, and, and that's what's really happened here, uh, again, towards the end of that first into the early part of the second quarter here. And you saw all the guys that they lost from last year, the entire first line midfield, starting defense, including their goalie, and a couple of those guys, Concanon, obviously, Osman, went on to uh, play in the MLL last summer. So some, some high-quality talent that graduated a year ago. And it was an offensive group that played together for a long time. You know, two, three seasons, you talk about that first line midfield. Felt like those guys were here for, forever uh, calling games at Hofstra. It's just so, again, when, when you have guys that play and play for that length of a career, you know, being starters for three or four years, uh, and you lose them, it's definitely tough to replace those types of players. So following the timeout, Hofstra has the ball back. Ohio State still leading four to three as we're inside seven minutes to go in the first half. Back at X, this is the freshman with Stopak. Stopak roll dodge inside, tucks the stick and puts the goal. Beating Josh Kearson. Stopak, nice individual effort from X and we're tied up at four. Nice inside roll from Stopak. Didn't really take his defenseman high. Usually when you hit that inside roll, you usually bring a guy high to that five and five spot and you're able to create that space underneath. But right here, the defenseman, he's got to start to get physical right now. He's got to be on his hip, and he's got to be driving. He, he makes contact too late, uh, and he was upfield. He was too high with his body positioning, and that led to Stopak inside rolling him and being able to finish right-handed. So nice play from Stopak, and Hofstra ties the game up here with 6.46 left in the second. Fourth different goal score for the Pride, so a 4-0 four four run to start the game for Ohio State. 4-0 run for Hofstra. Bridging the first and second quarters in another face-off win. Back-to-back face-off wins by the Pride. And timeout wisely taken by Seth Tyranny with Keegan Santos sort of towing the sideline there on the far side of the field. Yeah, you've got timeouts. Don't don't, uh, don't bring them in with, to you with into the locker room. So good timeout there from Coach Tyranny. Recognized that his guy was in a little bit of trouble. Again, we've talked about it. They've gotten momentum back. Game is tied up now. Last thing you want to do is, you know, win a face-off. You guys are excited. They're starting to play well and then have a turnover. So good timeout. Save the possession uh, and see if you can keep it rolling here offensively. Now, Ohio State, we talked about it. 5-0 and coming into this game. And it's not like they're not used to this situation. They've been top program for, for a while. But the travel to Dallas a week ago, going back to Ohio State, Take another plane trip to Hempstead, back-to-back uh, -back weekend. So it does start to add up after a while if, you are, uh, if you're the Buckeyes. But again, not a new situation being one of those more westerly programs in the, the scheme of college NCAA lacrosse. Yeah, and they didn't have a midweek game. You know, that, that sometimes is tough, too. When you, when you travel on a Saturday, you come back, you have a game Tuesday or Wednesday, and then you got to travel again the following Saturday. So they had plenty of time to regroup, recover. Um, got some Long Island guys on the roster, so you know those guys are always going to be excited to get home and, and play in front of the home crowd. So it's usually difficult for a team like Hofstra when, when another team comes because they always have a bunch of Long Island guys that are always looking to play really well in their homecoming. So you usually get the other team's best effort uh, when, when you're playing at home if you're Hofstra. But give, give Hofstra credit. Rough start. Stuck with it. Like we talked about, a young team easily. Could have started to pack that in uh, and get down on themselves, but showed a lot of character, a lot of fight, tied up here with possession. One of those Long Island guys you talk about, Matt Borges, for 
Ohio State defenseman. Played locally at, at Garden City, which is always one of the marquee high school programs in this area. So Hofstra's got it. Six minutes to go in the first half. Ohio State with one timeout remaining. Hofstra's used both of theirs. And the Pride trying to gain the lead for the first time today. This is Stopak score the game's last goal. Stopak up top, high pass. And that's going to be a turnover on the Pride as the ball came over the midfield line. Hofstra not happy with that call. Looked like he got pushed. There's a reason why he stepped over. Pretty obvious there, but ref saw it differently in Ohio State ball. Five and a half to go. Here's Buckley. Buckley drawing the pick, looking right towards the crease. And check misses and Ohio State back on top. It's five to four Buckeyes put in by Jasinski. What great physical presence by Jasinski to kind of just shoulder off somebody who was driving at him like a truck and he's able to set his feet and score. Yep, little pick up top, draws the slide. That second slide was just a little late. Like you said, Jasinski does a nice job of taking that contact Realizing that 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 you know that pressure is going to be there, that contact's going to be there, goes right through it, and able to finish. Spoke about it earlier. That second slide for Hofstra wasn't there early. Ohio State had some easy goals. They cleaned that up for the most part here, and then right there you see it comes back to haunt them again. That second slide's got to be there a little bit earlier if you're going to slide with that first slide early, and you got to be in possession position ready to help. So Ohio State, after surrendering the last four, they are back on top, it's five to four, and a face-off win for Inacio. Inacio struggling a little bit though with Santos riding his hip. Ohio State elects not to use the timeout that they have remaining, some trouble getting into the box. Well, they step it in right on the doorstep, shot fake goal! Jack Myers curled around from X and nobody was on him. Ohio State has scored two goals in less than a minute, and the Buckeyes are up by two once more. And I don't know how he got so open, was playing behind an X. Not sure where this Hofstra defenseman was going in this transition set. But Myers gets wide open. Let's take a look. Yeah, Hofstra defenseman was coming all the way across, and that's Michael Altman, who was coming across, not sure where he was going with that slide, and leaves Myers wide open, and all he's got to do is catch and finish. So just got to be a little bit better off ball there and understand the situation and that you can't leave that guy wide open coming from behind X. It almost seemed the way that Santos was right on Inacio that the defense kind of got really spread out because they were trying to force the turnover there. You're right. Maybe they were pressing out. Uh, thinking that they had a good matchup where they can create a turnover, a pole on a face-off guy, and they were pressed out. But either way, it was starting to settle down there. Was it not still not sure where he was going uh, with that slide, but either way, 6-4 Ohio State and a goal for Myers. Berber winning the face-off a moment ago, and Hofstra's got it. Shooting on the goal off to our right with 4.15 remaining in the first half. So game run so far, four for Ohio State, then four for Hofstra, two more for Ohio State. And that's where we stand at six to four late in the second quarter. This is with Stopak with a goal today. Stopak banging one off the side of the cage. Ball to the turf, scooped up by Ohio State. And then a big hit. Draws the ire of the crowd. Hofstra will have it. That elder midfielder inverting now after that drew perhaps the biggest reaction from the crowd so far today. 
Dodge from up top, shot up high, wide. Backing up was Giannis. Inside, four to play in this first half. Giannis, GLE up top for Tierney. Tierney thought about pulling the trigger. Instead, he'll invert. Straight away, Ardry with a goal today. Ball gets away. Will it stay in bounds? Yes, it will. And Kennard chasing after it. Ball comes over the midfield line, though. Philbin's got it for the pride for the moment. And they'll try to reset. Just 15 seconds on the shot clock. So they got to move the ball upfield in a hurry and then try and get a shot off. Philbin up top, four seconds left. Two, Tierney is just going to heave it down towards the baseline, the end line. And Hofstra will concede the turnover. A really great defensive presence for Ohio State on that possession. A smart play from Tierney. Don't want to just waste one and send it to the goalie and create transition going the opposite way, throw it in the corner or, or to the end line. Set up your ride and get back in the hole and play six on six. Yeah, we saw that in the MLL shortly after the shot clock was adopted. And that seemed to be, you know, if you're not going to get a good shot off, just take the smart play. Here's Leclerc in tight. The hat trick for Trey Leclerc. And Ohio State has scored three straight. Well, it's been a game of runs. It's four in a row for Ohio, Ohio State, State and four in a row for Hofstra. And now two in a row Trey here Leclerc. for Ohio State. Three in a row here for Ohio seven, State Lucas now. Buckley. And we take a look That's here, Leclerc get that alley dodge, gets that early slide. And again, you see that Time second goal, slide is on the back of, the of Leclerc. I think Hofstra's got to trust their matchups a little bit more with their one-on-ones defensively here. They're going very early to all Dodgers. Um, and that was that was a spot right there where I don't think they had to go so early. He was in good position, um, was playing some good one-on-one -on -one defense, but all day and all game long, they've just been going at Dodgers uh, right away, and it's really been their problem for them defensively because they haven't been able to, the few Ohio goals they've given up, it's all been Number because 30, of those second Ohio slides Ohio. and guys not covering up on the inside. Anasio on the faceoff win. Ohio State will use their last time out Ohio State. with a minute and 50 to go. Now, Justin Inacio on the faceoff X, as we, we talked about, 67% coming in to this game. Big Ten Specialist of the Week for the second straight week. He was 18 of 25 last week against Marquette. But the big thing, when the game was still in the balance, fourth quarter, 7 of 8 at the faceoff X. And, you know, when you have a guy who in crunch time can put up numbers like that, that's why you're 5-0 to start the year. Yeah, you want your face-off guy. Obviously, you want, you want him to have a high percentage, but like you said, it's those key face-offs. It, it's when the game is tight, uh, when the game is getting late, or when the other team's going on a run and you really need a big face-off to kind of kill that momentum and get your team a possession. You know, that's when you want your face-off guys to step up. And you said it, you know, last week he showed that he has the ability to do that and, and be a closer. Uh, and again, win those key face-offs at key moments for his team. Sophomore year, Nick Myers saying... He, uh, he put on a lot of weight, or a lot of strength, I should say, in the offseason. And, you know, that's important for the, perhaps one of the more physical positions uh, in the game of lacrosse. Yeah, and, and I think also, too, you've got to put on the right type of weight, right? Because I think with the shot clock and the way the game is being played, I think there's going to be a lot more face-offs because there's going to be a lot more goals, obviously. So you want your number one guy to be in shape, uh, and be able to take as many draws as possible. Because, again, I think there's going to be a lot more draws taken this year than compared to last year because of the pace of play and the way these offenses are forced to now, you know, play and be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive side of the ball. Buckeyes have scored three straight to open up a 7-4 advantage out of the timeout. A minute 30 to go in this first half. Here's a dodge from the corner. Casey got a piece of that. Knocked it away with Jack Myers. Backing up for Ohio State. There's Myers. Roll dodge. Toe in the crease line. 
turns, fires, and that one somehow beat Casey. Boy, from this angle, when that bounced off the turf, it was look, it looked like it was sailing wide of the cage. A little English on that, it cuts back inside. A, a little English and a little bit of a step back. You know, you talk about in basketball, step back three. You, you're gonna see it right here. He makes that physical contact on the corner. Up a second. Getting bodied up, realized that his defense was on his heels, backed up a little bit, takes a few steps, realizes he has the space and Myers just buries it with that low corner bounce shot. So give credit to him to be able to take that step back and then regain his footing and get everything behind that shot. So nice play from Jack Myers. Myers two goals today. And Ohio State scoring four straight. And Nacio makes it five in a row. Nobody slid up to the Fogo and he said, I'm gonna take this one and let it fly. We talked about him just before, making those key plays at key moments. You've got all the momentum right before half, just over a minute left. And not only does he get you a win, but he gets you a fast break, and he's able to finish it himself. So nice play from Inacio. Again, take a look. He beats that defender there. There's really no help coming. Hasha's a little late, and a team has been very quick to slide in the six-on-six. Six. It was a little late there in transition. And Inacio finishes it off and extends this Ohio State lead. So Inacio and Herbert go back to the X. We'll have a whistle and a flag. It's the third of the, uh, the half against Inacio. I didn't realize he had two already. Yeah, two were earlier on in the game. Ohio State penalty on number two, Jack Meyer. 30 seconds delay of game. So delay of game on and now the penalty, 13.52. Off Offshore goes to the man up for the second time today. 0 for 1 on the man advantage. Finding themselves trailing 9-4. Final minute of the second yeah! quarter. Tierney shot coming out of nowhere to fly in front and block that thing was Evan Riss. Well, talk about sacrificing your body. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I wasn't one of those guys. <laughs> you were very sound positionally. <laughs> Penalty is released. Tierney's got it up top. We'll see. Will Hofstra try and hold for the final shot of the opening half? Stopak on a roll dodge. Offense closes over. Stopak dangling the stick, extending it all the way to the left hand. Ten seconds to go in the game. First half, that is. Suffocating defense for Ohio State. Tierney up top. Tierney lost his footing. Time runs out. Hofstra not able to get a shot off. And Ohio State had their backs against the wall a little bit midway through that second quarter. Well, they got up and finished out the second quarter in a strong way. Five unanswered goals to take a nine to four lead at the end of the first half. Well, I think if you're, you know, Coach Tierney and some of the leaders on that team, you've got to take some confidence. And, hey, guys, we were down four nothing. We made a run. We got back into it. It's still so early in this game. You've got two full quarters. It's just one goal at a time. And like I said, I think defensively, I would love to see these guys show a little bit with their slides. Not fully commit and go, but show. Because every time they've shown, the Ohio State Dodger has backed off uh, and moved the ball, and it hasn't really hurt Hofstra. When they fully committed and they're just sliding early, that's when they've been hurt on the inside. Hofstra had the faceoff advantage in the first half by 1-8-7. to seven. Ohio State takes the first one in... Uh, in the second half here. You see the weather, 44 degrees, sunny, feels warmer than that, especially with the, the biting wind that we've had in the Northeast here the last week or so. I was gonna say, that's why it feels so warm. It's been so cold here lately, but these, these two teams got a great day to play here. So Ohio State going back to work. Swim so move from the top left corner, look right across the crease. Casey moves to his left, but 
put in by Jack Myers, his third today. And Ohio State comes out of the gate in the second half, just like they finished the first with a quick goal. And you talked about, you know, Hofstra responding after that early four-goal deficit two, and what they needed to do here. And this is probably the worst possible start. You lose the opening face-off, and then it's just a simple, easy goal from Ohio State. They dodge down the alley, throw it right across the crease to the backside, and Myers is right there. And again, it's, it's really been that communication, that second and third slide from this Hofstra defense. If you're going to commit and you're going to go early to every Dodger, you've got to make sure the guys off ball are prepared and ready to go. Jack Myers, 12 goals on the season now in his freshman campaign, had seven in a game versus Bucknell earlier this year. Hofstra winning the faceoff. Here's Tyranny, rings one off the crossbar. And goes out of bounds. Hofstra will keep it. Number 13, and Nick Myers, the Ohio State head coach, says that Jack Myers, no relation, really a great fit. He said he compliments some of the guys that they have, great vision, good size as well. And he takes a lot of the pressure off LeClaire in the attack and Reed in the midfield. I mean, you got a freshman who could do that and, you know, cash in on the chances he's given. That's, that's always a good thing for a coaching staff. Cross is one of those sports where freshmen can come in and have an impact right away. You know, it's tough in a sport like football. Uh, sometimes just physically not there, the size isn't there. But in lacrosse and basketball, these kids are coming in, uh, and freshmen again can have a really big impact on some of these top tier programs. There's Ryan Tierney, who has a freshman, won the CAA Rookie of the Year for Hofstra. He has a dislodge. Ohio State is Ohio State really Ohio making his life difficult there. today. Well, he's going to get a lot of attention from opposing defenses. I mean, he's he's the top guy, and I think right now, coaching staffs across the country, when you look at Hofstra, you're not you're not all that concerned with the other guys. So you, you probably come into the game feeling like if we can stop tyranny, or at least limit him and really put a lot of attention on him, we could take care of the rest of the guys. Uh, and the guys from Hofstra offensively here today, at least, have not really stepped up to take that pressure off of tyranny. Ohio State with their largest lead of the game. It's 10 to 4. A couple minutes into the third quarter. Bugliosi as a double team comes over to him. Slide coming over. Ball fed back at X. Myers survey. And three goals today for the freshman. He and LeClaire have combined for six Buckeye tallies. Look right on the crease and a behind the back goal for Trey LeClaire. Goes far side, low corner. And goal number four has probably been the highest difficulty and perhaps the prettiest. And your job as a defensive, if your guy gets hung up, like in this position, the attackman has a defender hung up, your only job off ball is to cover cutters. You're, you're not worried about anything else. You're not worried about really sliding at that point. You've just got to cover up the guys on the inside. And a guy like LeClaire, the best offensive player, that's the last guy you could allow to get freed up and get his hands free. And a, and a really nice place, finishing that behind the back, catching that. So give credit to him, but Hofstra defensively, you've got to do a better job. You've got to make sure you're covering up in front when your guy's hung up behind the goal. Well, Seth Tierney felt like he saw enough of Trey LeClaire over the summer, a member of Team Canada in the World Games in Israel this past summer. Seth Tierney was on the Team USA coaching staff. Getting a good look at him today, four goals for the visiting Buckeyes. Another move in sight. Casey got a piece of that one. And a crease violation, they will say. That's a good save from Casey. He's been under a lot of pressure here in the start this second half. And I, you know, I think he, before some of these goals here happened here early in the, in the second half, I thought he really did a good job in the first half. Kept, kind of kept them in the game at certain points, making some big saves. But a lot of the goals that have been scored have been right on top of him. And he's been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of rubber here today. 
Yeah, definitely not an easy situation for, for any keeper. Four minutes gone by in the third. And now Ohio State in control of this one. Turnover by Hofstra. Scooped up by the Buckeyes. Here's LeClaire again. He's been dangerous. Leading goal scorer for Ohio State has four more today, giving him 20 on the season. Honorable mention, All-American last year, third team, the year prior to that. The year that Ohio State fell in the national championship game. And of course, out of a really packed Big Ten trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. Myers trying to create for Mex. Goal line extended, another shot, another goal for Ohio State. Nick Musi, first tally of the day today, and Ohio State has cracked this thing open. Just another lack of communication here from Hofstra. Two guys off of the pick here behind. Two guys go to the ball carrier. And it's just a simple pass, throws it right over to him. No help coming, you just gotta communicate through those picks. You're either switching or you're staying. And if you are gonna jump it, then you've gotta be much more aggressive there. Uh, but again, defensively not communicating through these picks, not communicating off ball. And they're really making it easy for Ohio State. I mean, that's a simple pass and a simple shot for this Ohio State offense. You gotta make these guys work for these goals. Herber winning the face off. And we talked about Inacio and how he closed out the game last week against Marquette, seven of eight in the fourth quarter. Nick Myers, those guys who can really study and make solid adjustments as the game goes on. And while Hofstra becoming a bit unraveled, a couple careless turnovers on their last possessions, and Ohio State goes back to work. Ohio State trying to buck the trend this series all time. Hofstra has a 4-2 advantage. And every win has belonged to the home team so far in this series. Dating back to 1955. They've played more frequently since 2015. This will be their fourth meeting. Behind the back shot again. This one going high. Not a lot on it. Stays in bounds. Really nothing on it. Yeah. <laughs> Out of bounds. It'll go to Hofstra. So as I mentioned, since 2015, this is the fourth meeting. Two in Columbus, one here. And Ohio State has won those two in Ohio State. By combined three goals, Hofstra won 8-5 here back in 2016. So if this difference holds, this would also be the most lopsided in the series since the first two games. One starting way back under Howdy Myers in 1955, and the other one in 1987, both here in Hempstead. Up top, a low shot. Easy save by Kearson. And that's a tough shot, wasn't stepping down, didn't have a lot on it, was kind of almost baiting away, didn't have his feet really set, and, and throws a bounce shot. Um, and they tracked it the entire way. Kerrison was all over that shot. Midway through the third quarter, Ohio State on top, 12 to four, over the Hofstra Pride. And I think if you're Ohio State now, you want to start to use this shot clock. You've got this 12 to four lead, you know, still some time left in the game, but I think you want to milk this clock, shorten the game. You know, when the shot clock gets to about 20 seconds, then start to initiate your offense. 
uh, and try to score then. But again, use the clock, take away the amount of possession that Hofstra is going to have left in this game. And they are doing that a little bit. Down to 18 on the shot clock. Crowding things in front. Here's a look on the cutter to LeClaire. He has it lost on a back check by Wenz, who then picks it up and moves it upfield. Hofstra doing a much better job there. Again, Ohio State gets their defenseman hung up, camped out at X, and they did a better job in front of the goal and guarding those cutters and being active with their sticks on the inside. Take a look at Hofstra's upcoming schedule. They get a couple of Big East games, St. John's and Providence, both at home. And then at Rutgers, another Big Ten foe before they get into conference play. And, you know, you dive right in with the number one team in the country, at least right now, on the road at Towson to begin CAA play. And they really need to win the next two because those last three, that Probably Rutgers, Towson, four, UMass, that's a tough stretch. I, th I think I saw Rutgers last week. That's a team that's getting better every week. They've got some talent on the offense, and UMass is, is a team that lost this Ohio State team in a close one at home, uh, and I think they're going to get better as the year goes on because they've got a ton of talent as well. So that's a tough stretch there, and obviously Towson number one. So really would need the next two, you know, against St. John's and Providence if you're Hofstra. Here's Ohio State in transition. A shot from Matt Borges goes wide. And you know the Long Island product would have loved to score. I mean, defensemen love to score any chance yeah, they get, yeah, exactly. but that would have been that would have been a little cherry on top. Garden City native, probably grew up about five minutes from this stadium, so that would have been nice. I'm sure he's got a lot of friends and family in the stands, but he'll take uh, he'll take a 12-4 lead. I think he'll be happy with that. Geographically, about two miles from Hempstead. Going down as Myers and a flag will come up. So it looks like Ohio State will go man up. Under five to go in the third. Uh, Michael Altman, the guilty party. You see right here, he's going to get his arms extended. He's up high on the back. And that's a tough spot for a defensive, a defense, especially now with the dive where guys can go across. Um, but you gotta, gotta be on the hip. You want, you want to push on his hip. If you push him high, you're not really gonna move him. But if you can push him on his hip. His body's gonna have to go where his hip goes. When you push high on the back, to be able to bend, and kind of squirt out of that cross check. So he's got to be a better job. He's got to get lower with his positioning of his hands. 30-second man advantage. Neither team has scored on the man up today, and it looks like that will hold true. Casey, little dicey there, clamping down on it. Myers knocking it away. Myers trying to scoop it back up. He's able to create a turnover. Wow. Now talk about a freshman giving you some extra effort there. Jack Myers almost was able to shovel it in, just robbed the goalie in sheer hard work and effort. And Hofstra needs as many possessions as possible at this point, and you, you can't have a turnover there where the goalie has it in his stick. He's got to be able to come away with that ground ball and get your possession. And again, Ohio State, you know, looking to work the clock, use the shot clock, and, and again, use as much game time as they can. Buckley will dish it off. Take a look at Ohio State's upcoming schedule. In a moment, a shot just pulled wide by Jasinski. Denver at Notre Dame before they get into, you know, I think the Big Ten is might be the toughest lacrosse conference in all the country. Rutgers, Penn State, Hopkins, this Ohio State team. If it's not the toughest, it's one of the top two. It is definitely, right now with the way Penn State's playing, Hopkins is up early on Syracuse right now. 
and Rutgers, like I said, I had a chance to see them. Very talented, young team, but going to get better as the year goes on. If you look at that schedule, I mean, Denver, Notre Dame, Hopkins, I mean, that's just, that's a tough stretch for Ohio State, so that's why today's game was even so much more important, I think, for them, because the next five games are, are a total gauntlet for the Buckeyes. And they work on that out-of-conference year in and year out. Obviously, the in-conference is tough. I mean, the ACC would be right in that conversation for most difficult or most competitive league country-wise, top to bottom. Look right across the crease, dumped in. Jack Jasinski right on the doorstep, beating Bobby Casey in Ohio State. Opens it up to a nine goal advantage. You know, we talked about Hofstra being a young team. You know, it's one thing, it's one thing to lose. But right now, I, I think, you know, Hofstra, you, you can tell the energy is totally out of this squad. Um, and if you're Coach Tierney and the rest of his staff, you, you'd like to see your team fight a little harder. Obviously, you're down, and this is a tough way, and this is a tough game for them. Uh, and things obviously haven't gone their way here today, but got to get those heads up. You got to start playing with some energy, with some passion, and, and have some pride and try to uh, put out a, a little bit of a better effort because some of these goals for Ohio State have been really easy. And it's not so much about what Ohio State's doing offensively. I think it just really goes back to uh, just total effort on the defensive side right now from Hofstra. Well, one of the strongest areas they've had today has been the play of Brian Herber, the sophomore out of Smithtown, played locally at Smithtown East High School. And you, know, you talk about a program that has some focos. They had Herber, they had uh, Gerard Arceri together at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were grooming him for a while there. Oh, he, he and uh, Inacio have had a good battle at the face-off X today. A shot going high number 12, off the stick of Matt Elder. Elder. We'll start your lacrosse Saturdays with LSN College Central on Lack Sports Network beginning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern every week. We get you ready for all the biggest games of the weekend from around the country. Don't let your game day begin without checking out LSN's College Central only on Lack Sports Network. Ninety seconds remaining in the third quarter, a quarter in which Ohio State has grown their lead. This was a 4-4 game at one point, about midway through the second quarter. Ohio State went on a 5-0 run to end that second, and they've Ohio continued State. that pace here in the third. I think you, you kind of hit it, Steve. Hofstra, young team. One Demoralized wouldn't the be the right quarter. word, but definitely quarter. some frustration uh, on their parts with how Ohio State has been able to come out of this thing. Yeah, I mean, Ohio State, you know, I, I think coming into the game, I think you, you obviously would have thought Ohio State was the favorite, uh, but you did obviously you gave Hofstra a shot and a chance. Uh, got a lot of talent on that side and, and a great staff, but like you said, I think Ohio State's really not so much really what they've done. I, I think, you know, part of this third quarter has just been really a lack of effort you know it got off to that rough start they scored the first goal in the third pretty quickly and easily and then from there you could just see the overall energy uh leave the team and you know you, you guys have got to fight got to keep playing no matter what the score is and, and you'd like to see a little bit more passion you know from you guys in white ohio state will turn it over on a shot clock violation which is 14 seconds left in the third quarter Bounce pass ahead for Ellis. And Ellis, a little bit out of his reach. Ohio State gets it back. Time winding down. Two seconds. Shot at the horn. Goes high of the cage. The third and that'll be the end of the third quarter. So the Buckeyes, 15 minutes away from improving to 6-0 on the season. At Ohio State leading Hofstra by a score of 13-4. Matt Short, Steve Panarelli with you. And that's uh, that's warm weather closed for the last uh, week or so that we've had here weather-wise. Got a nice sunny day out and a good lacrosse weather day. And Ohio State has certainly enjoyed and appreciated the atmosphere. They add another goal to their already high tally. The offense has been buzzing today for the Buckeyes. 
And they come out here 21 seconds into the fourth and put one on the board. Jackson Reed is second today. Ohio State goal, his second of the game, fault of the season, score by number 29. Just nice Jackson passing Reed. right here from Ohio State offensively. As Jackson Reed, his second Just of the game, throws it right across the, the crease. You can see the defenders is a little late, a little slow from getting down two, that Jack backside. It is an As Ohio State moved the ball faster than the Hofstra defenseman can move goal, and rotate. And Reed able to finish that on the backside. So nice play for Ohio State with their man up unit. You know, talking to Seth Tierney earlier this week, you know, we were talking about the youth and some of the challenges there, and, and I asked him, you know, how are you, from a coaching staff standpoint, how are you measuring progress this year, either from a, a macro sort of week-to-week -week or a day-to-day -day thing? And he said, you know, we, we have to see that we're getting better day in, day out. We can't allow the score to dictate how we feel about the effort that we're putting in. Today, I would say, especially in the second half, those things kind of are going hand in hand, right? Like you, like he said, you can you can play well and lose, you can play poorly and win. Today, I think it's been a combination of their, they, at least in the second half, they don't, I would think they don't feel like they've played that great overall. No, they haven't played well. And, and I think, again, it, it comes back to just the overall energy and effort. I, I think, you know, between quarters here, you know, I, I took a look down at the Hofstra sideline and I could see Coach Tierney giving a pretty passionate speech and I'm pretty sure he was talking about the energy, the effort, you know, finish this thing off. Don't, don't, let's not pack it in. Let's try to finish strong here, win the fourth quarter and take something positive, you know, into practice and into the next, next game. So see what they could do here in the fourth. Obviously Ohio State starts this one early with a, with a goal right away with that man that man up opportunity but even some of the penalties they've taken here in the second half have been out of frustration which you don't want to see from your team either so got to respond here got to see you guys you know show a little fight and show a little passion here in the fourth quarter and with a young team those types of things are valuable oh, absolutely. Can be. absolutely it builds character uh builds trust in the guys knowing that the guy next to him is going to play to the final whistle no matter what uh, and that helps build confidence as well Meanwhile, on the confidence side of things, Ohio State, you got to feel that they're moving into the latter part of their season. You know, just about halfway through, if they finish this one off strong, 6-0, strong couple road performances after the headstrong game a week ago down at SMU, you know, their confidence is, will have to be sky high as well. Yeah, I think they beat a tough UMass team at UMass. It's, it's one of the most difficult places to play in all of college across at Garber Field, and they were able to to win that game, and then they come here on Long Island, which is usually a tough place to play, so tough place to play as well. Uh, but we looked at that that next couple of games for them. So their their real tests are coming the next five games, and we'll really find out what this team is all about over the next couple of weeks. Shot and a save made Shot by Casey. Four, Three minutes three gone by in the fourth. Hofstra will try and move up field now. As we talked about, getting some of those positive things under the belt. If you're Hofstra, here's Barnathan. And Tierney whistles one wide. That might have been one of his freer shots that he's had today. Ohio State has done a great job on number 13 defensively. Yeah, like we said, we, we knew he'd be the focal point of any opposing team and, and when they're starting to scheme and strategize defensively. He's the guy it starts with, and you've, you've got to stop him first, and then you can start to take care of the other guys. And they've done a nice job of showing to him, sliding to him when they've had to, uh, and really have been all over him all day. Bounce shot. I don't know if that was that on cage exactly, but Kirsten got a piece of it. And Steve, we talked about all the, the player personnel that Hofstra lost from a year ago. It's a pick off by Santos. Well, how about Kevin Understein as well? Kevin Understein as Santos moving in, shooting it high. And nobody backing up for Hofstra, so it'll be Ohio State ball. You know, member of Team USA this past year. Longtime defensive presence uh, on the coaching staff for the Pride. Mm -hmm. Getting a job as an assistant with North Carolina this year. Yeah, you know, obviously Kevin, good lacrosse mind. Uh, he's an alum, you know, so I think that that usually, um, you know, guys on a, on a team will, will respect that a little bit more. A guy that played here and did it for, for this program. So it definitely hurt losing him, but they replaced him with a guy in, in John Gorman, who's a very good coach, young up and coming assistant 
you know, coaches with a lot of passion, a lot of energy, uh, as a high intensity type guy, similar to, to Kevin. Um, but I, I think really, you know, like you said, the key has really just been all this senior leadership that they've lost, the goalie, Con Cannon, uh, and really a lot of midfielders that played a lot of lacrosse for them. Stopak coming in and putting one by Kirsten. Second goal today and draws some flags after the fact. And you've seen a nice response here from Hoffer. Santos, he picked off that pass, you know, ran through two defenders from Ohio State, took a shot. You know, the backup wasn't there, but you like the energy, you like the effort. And then, uh, you know, then they answer here with her goal uh, from Stopak. Does a nice job, beats the short stick, takes the contact, is able to finish it off. So this is the type of response you want to see from this young Hoffer team playing with that energy and guys fighting to the last whistle. Brandon Barker, the guilty party on the penalty. It'll be a minute, man up chance for Hofstra after the goal. And I think from an offensive standpoint, we've seen today, they've attacked and dodged very well from X with the ball. And I'd like to see a little bit more of that from their side. The success they've had really has been when they've gone to those short stick matchups, taking those short stick defenders behind, playing out of that invert. It's led to some good opportunities and, and two or three goals for them. Um, so that's something that you can look forward to. And Hasha, I think, came out early, but Ohio State controlled the ball anyway. Christian Feliziani took that last face off for Ohio State. Nick Myers, I'm sure, figuring get somebody some extra reps. And you, you don't want to wear him down. Like, you know, like we talked about, there's going to be a lot more face offs. Uh, this year than in years past because of the shot clock and so if you can if you could pull your face off guy and have him you know not take maybe the last five or six draws here today you know that's an advantage for you later in the year well, Ryan Tierney on the Tuarton Ohio watch list. State penalty on number 48 so the CAA guys 30 seconds on purple. that watch list Isaac Paparo, Zach Goodrich Ryan Tierney the lone Hofstra representative there on the 2019 to our town watch list. Yeah, some good names out of there from the CAA. Isaac Paparo, very talented player. Uh, and Towson's got two good ones there as well. So a lot of talent in this CAA conference. Ohio, Ohio State took a timeout just a moment ago. They're two men down after another penalty. So they've got 32 seconds of being man down. 30 seconds of being two men down for the next moment or so. Wednesday nights on Lax Sports Network, it's the CAA Press Pass. We'll bring you all the latest news and notes from around the conference. Prepare for the biggest games of the week. CAA Press Pass on Lax Sports Network every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. The fans have seen some great Ohio State offense today. Number nine team in the country and likely will be moving up in the polls when they come out on Monday. You know, one of three unbeaten teams in the country along with Towson coming into the week as well as Cornell. If you came to see Ohio State today, you've gotten plenty, plenty of the Buckeyes here. As a fan, they've done a great job here today. You know, we focused on Hofstra a little bit here today, but give a lot of credit to the Ohio State team. Came in here, took care of business, jumped on them early. You know, Hofstra had a nice response, got back into the game, and then since then, it's been all Ohio State just dominating. Uh, and really, in all aspects of the game, done a great job with the faceoff effects. Goalie play has been well, uh, good. The offense and the defense have played well taking ball, care of the ball. Coach Myers said that's one of the things they wanted to clean up here today. I, I don't think they've been sloppy with the ball at all. Um, and again, they, they've done a great job all around. And we knew they were a very balanced team, and, and they really showed it here today. Hofter, two men up out of this timeout. A six on four. Tierney steps into one. A shot whistling wide, and it looked from up here as though Kirsten had the beat on that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how Hofstra got that one, but they'll take it. 15 remain on the man advantage shot. An Ohio State helmet 
Caromed up into the air and Hofstra recovers the loose ball. Shot from up top, whizzing past the cage. Riley Forte has a goal today. One penalty over, two seconds remain on the other one. And a fruitless man up chance for Hofstra. There's Tierney trying to go into the long pull. Let's one fly from the outside alley. And Kirsten is there for the stop. Hofstra two man up opportunity there. Unable to come away with, with really anything. Give credit to Ohio State's man down defense, but offensively you gotta get something there. Well, Santos able to create a turnover. Riley Forte's got it back in his stick. Now, Ohio State has definitely let up a little bit. You can tell they're trying to use a bit more of that shot clock. When they've had possession over the last few minutes. There's freshman Matt Elder. Elder trying to turn, create some space. Now he does. And Kirsten didn't see that well. Kind of lets his head drop after it went in. In frustration. So Matt Elder has his second goal of the season. And Hofstra trails 14 to 6. And, that, and that's one that Kirsten is going to wish he had back. Just got to hug the pipe there. Elder, take away that's near pipe right here. You're gonna see Kirsten gets top side there, and again, it's a good shot from Elder, able to beat his man top side, get his hands free. Someone probably should have showed from Ohio State, showed a little help there, especially as he got past that five and five spot. But give credit to Elder, nice play and a nice shot coming from X. Ohio State face-off win, scooping up the ground ball, under eight to go in this game, a 14-6 Ohio State lead. As the Buckeyes try to move to 6-0 on the season. One guy we haven't talked about is Jeff Henrik of Ohio State. He was, he's had the assignment today of tyranny and, and you know, we, we talked about his his ability as an offensive player. Obviously, Hofstra's best guy, and he's done a great job with his one-on-one -on -one matchup here today. Give him a lot of credit. Yeah, played in 15 games last year at the LSM. Sliding down to close defense this year. Captain, and he's been, has been trying to work on, on his voice this year, being more vocal, which is so important from a defensive standpoint. Roll dodge, feet across the crease. Nick Musi was looking to hammer it home, unable to do so. Fresh shot clock, though. As you talk about, situations like this is also where that, that shot clock can kind of come in handy because it takes away the guesswork from the officials. It doesn't have the, the home crowd who's trailing, asking for a stall warning the second that it looks like the team that's leading loses a little aggressiveness in their yeah, offense. Th this would have been a spot last year where the, where the refs put it on right away um, and, and quicker than they probably would have for the rest of the game. So that's kind of where it gets a little, you know, it got a little funky. You know, all game you call it one way, and then as the game starts to tighten up, you call it a different way. So put the time on, makes it makes much more sense. It makes it much easier for the officials. Here's Dominic Pryor, low shot. Nice save by Kirsten, ranging across his body for the bottom right save. Ohio State pushing up the other way. But guys, will slow it down for a moment. An area in the game where we might have seen them really push after that earlier in the contest. Shot getting away and out of bounds, or a pass out of bounds, pardon me. Over the stick of Bugliosi. Here 
Keegan Santos bringing the ball upfield. He's a guy that I've been impressed with on, on Hofstra's team. You know, high energy guy, very athletic, can make plays in between the lines. It's been a guy that, you know, like I said, I've been impressed with watching here today. Someone that they can look forward to for the future, someone that they can <clears throat> count on and, and have a guy that can make some plays for. CAA all rookie team a year ago. Played in 11 games. He started all six games so far this year at the long pole. Up top it comes for Hofstra's Bryce Tolmey, and Tolmey unable to handle it. Ohio State again with Ohio some State speed. This is Omari DeBerry. Talk about the Ohio State team that made it to the championship game in 2017. A little bit of a down year, but last year. But look at some of the guys that returned. I mean, Borges is a big impact player for them right now. Jack Jasinski as well. Feliziani, who we've seen taking some face-offs. I mean, it, it's tough to replicate that championship experience for guys that uh, that have been through that. I mean, Trey LeClaire, Nick Musi. Terrafanko, those are some of your big time guys right now. Yeah, it's good, you know, the, they got that experience. Hosh makes a nice play right there. At the midfield, short stick defender. Here's Ellis in transition. And a new netminder in for Ohio State as Skyler Walland, a freshman goalie, on his first shot of the day gets a tough one. Gets a tough one, wasn't really ready for that. That was a, that was a quick change from, uh, <clears throat> from offense to defense. And I don't think anybody from Ohio State was ready there. So Mark Ellis with a great defensive effort. Just hard physical play, scooped up the ball, took it right to the rack. Not even, that was almost up from the top of the box. That was, yeah, that was a good play from Ellis. He went out all the way to the midfield line to guard his guy. Got him with that nice cross check. Got him to the ground, caused the loose ball, and finished it off with the goal. So good play from, from Ellis. Delay penalty coming up on Ohio State as Herbert with the faceoff win. Closing in on the three minute mark of this game, Ohio State doubling up Hofstra at 14 to seven. They're going to get a trip as Herber had gone down after the face-off win. Drive from X, turnaround shot, hit off the post. And now the whistle will blow after Ohio State takes it. Another flag coming down, so it looks like Hofstra may go two-man up for the second time today. Unable to convert on the first time. They were two men up, see what they do here. So we'll see what the penalties are right now. Christian Feliciani went down there for the trip. And we'll also have a push. It looks like against... I'm trying to see who steps in the box. Colin Souter. On the push. So Hofstra goes two men up for the second time today. This for a full 30 seconds. Here's Tierney with an opening. Low to high top shelf. And Ryan Tierney took him almost the entire game, but finally on the board today. And he's a guy, he can shoot it from the outside. He, he, he needs to get his feet set. And once he gets his feet set, he, he has enough on it to be an outside shooter. And right here you see the lefty, he catches it and puts everything he's got behind this one. And really nice release, low to high, and buries it in the near side corner. So nice play from Tierney. That'll extend his point streak this season to six. 
You know, you talked earlier about young team in Hofstra. How are they going to close out despite the the score? What do you feel like you've seen from them in the last 10 minutes or so? Well, you know, it, it's obviously gotten better here. You know, it, it was a rough start here to the second half. Ohio State, you know, blitzed them and, and got on them early. But I, I think, you know, give them credit. I think after that third quarter, I think, like I said, I, I watched Coach Tierney give him a pretty uh, passionate talk and speech, and they've obviously responded here in the fourth quarter, and, and, and things have looked a little bit better for him. Shot whistling wide. Shot by number four, Charlie Ruggo. Charlie Ragolt in the game for the first time today. Another shot, save made by Walland of Ohio State. Inside, two minutes to go in this one. Shot going high over the head of Casey. Here's Matt Klibanoff. He and Mike, two freshmen on the roster, though one is an attackman, and one is a goaltender, the two Klibanoff brothers. Here's Omari DeBerry. Final minute to play in this one. Ohio State will move to 6-0 and on the season, remain one of the three unbeatens in the country, along with Towson and Cornell. Good company to be in. Cornell, another team loaded with talent. Jeff Teat, great player, top five guy in, in the country right now. So it's good company to be in if you're Ohio State. We talked about their upcoming schedule, though. Going to be a gauntlet coming up. See what they can do over the next five games. That'll be their real test and really find out what this team's got. Shot clock violation. And we talked about the top conferences. Meta given short shift to the Ivy League with Cornell and Yale in the top. Mm -hmm. A little top heavy, but Penn right there as well. Yeah, talking on Cornell, you, you could put them in the class of anybody in the country. Maybe the rest of the conference needs to to pick it up a little bit, but th those two guys are two premier programs and are right in the national championship conversation. Waiting seconds here in Hempstead. Final horn will sound, and Ohio State comes in, knocks off the pride in Hempstead for the first time in program history. And 2019 keeps on rolling along for the Buckeyes. 6-0 and on the year. A 14-8 victory today here on the road. Well, just right from the get-go, Steve. Things were solid for Ohio State. They scored a minute in. Minus a little run for Hofstra. They never really looked back after that. Yeah, minus that four-goal run by Hofstra in the second quarter. Uh, otherwise, it was all Buckeyes. Dominant on both ends of the field. Did a great job of the face-off X. Uh, and again, they just really... They really dominated a young Hofstra team here at Hofstra. So again, Ohio State moving to 6-0 and on the season, back-to-back semi-road games. Down in Texas last week and another one here. The big guys got it done for Ohio State. Jack Myers, Trey LeClaire, Jackson Reed all had multi-goal games today. And it was a dominant offensive performance for Ohio State. Once again, our final score, Ohio State knocking off Hofstra by a score of 14-8 for Steve Panarelli and our entire crew. I'm Matt Shortest. Coming up tonight at 7 p.m. on LSN, it's the 2019 Major League Lacrosse Draft. Thanks for watching the CAA Game of the Week on Lac Sports Network.